The experience of lifetimes are yours to discover. From the front lines abroad to the front porches at home, from World War I to today, your journey into wartime America begins in Nampa at the Warhawk Air Museum. Good morning. My name is Ian Morris. I am a historian at the Warhawk Air Museum in Nampa, Idaho. Today I'd like to speak to you about trench art. Conflict and strife have long inspired men and women to artistic endeavor. From the songs and poems about the Trojan War, compiled by Homer in the Iliad, to Pablo Picasso's emotive impressions of the bombing of Guernica, there is something about tragedy which inspires a primal need to create. However, it is still surprising to many when the tools of destruction themselves become the artwork. In a modern context, this is referred to as trench art. Trench art is generally defined as any sort of decorative object constructed from an object whose manufacture was directly linked to armed conflict. Commonly, this takes the form of bullet or artillery casings repurposed into a decorative keepsake. Engraved powder horns, game pieces made from bone and spent bullets, and inkwells made from cannonballs are a fixture of early modern conflict. The introduction of projectiles with brass casings in 1857 provided these artists with a new medium. Though examples from 19th century wars exist, mostly as vases, the medium really came into its own during the First World War. We have some beautiful examples of trench art here at the Warhawk that I'd like to show you. Welcome to the Warhawk. I brought you here because I want to show you three of my favorite pieces of trench art. In no particular order, we've got this French 75 millimeter shell which was originally fired in combat in Verdun between 1916 and 1917. Now, there's a large engraving of Victoire holding a lance and wearing a helmet with a French cockerel on top. On this side over here, you've got this beautiful engraving of a fr French soldier carrying a wounded comrade while firing at a German, as one does. And up here you have a Royal Air Corps that looks like a FC-2B shooting down a German albatross. This piece is actually fairly unique as it's one of our only pieces of trench art that's actually signed by its engraver, a man we only know as Juliano. This lamp is another favorite of mine. Now it was originally a 40 millimeter Mark II round which is dated to December 1944. This round was fired most commonly from 40 millimeter 56 Mark I's, Mark II's, or M1's, and was commonly known as a Bofors gun. This round would have been fired at low-flying aircraft, such as torpedo bombers and kamikazes, at a rate of about 160 rounds a minute. Placed upon the 40 millimeter is this beautiful ship's wheel, fashioned from a five-inch naval shell. A 20 millimeter cannon shell dated from 1942 forms the center, with 30-06 rounds forming the spokes of the wheel. And finally, we have these three candlesticks, all, all inscribed with Philippine Islands, 1945. The bases of these artifacts are 40 millimeter Mark II Navy rounds with an anchor emblem dated uh, 10, 1943, 12, 1943, and 6, 1944. The stands are about six inches in height and they're made from 50 caliber casings. The candle holder tops are made from 20 millimeter casings. Now, two of the stands are inscribed with USS Nautilus number 167. The Nautilus was a fleet submarine which served in the South Pacific Theater and would have been wrapping up its 14th and final patrol as part of a distinguished Second World War career. She was decommissioned with a bottle of champagne over a forward six-inch gun on June 30th, 1945 and sold to the North American Smelting Company. 
for scrap. Each of these items, and the many other examples of trench art we have here at the Warhawk, are more than just pretty pieces. Each one tells a story.